Ezekiel chapter 32. And it came to pass in the twelfth year, the twelfth month, and the first day of the month. There you go. There's a date. The word of the Lord came unto me saying, I believe 19 places in the Bible where God gives the month, day, and year. I put them on my Facebook the other day. Son of man, take up a lamentation for the Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and say unto him, Thou art like a young lion. Now, would that lion of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, would that be the lion type of king of Judah? Or would that be a type of the lion, your adversary, the devil? Think about that question now as we go into this chapter. Because there are men in the Bible who are likened to Jesus Christ, David, Abel. And there are men that are likened to the devil. And we are looking at something historical in Ezekiel chapter 32. And yet we're going to see something prophetic. Now, I sat under a man teaching a Sunday school, and he got, there are no prophets in the church age. Teaching Ezekiel chapter 32, I'm a prophet because I'm telling you what's going to happen. When I tell you you don't believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to go to hell. That's prophecy. So, okay, think about that lion. Lion, the tribe of Judah, or the adversary, the devil. Thou art as a whale in the sea. You know what a whale is, don't you? No, you don't. You don't know what a whale is. Because the modern Bibles, and I looked this one up, say it's a sea monster. Save the sea monsters. I don't think so. They say it's a crocodile. Oh, that put Moby Dick into a big frenzy. This crocodile out the middle of the Atlantic and Pacific Ocean chasing Ahab. Must have been a mighty big crocodile. I think crocodiles are the land animal ones and alligators of the sea. But and then here's one really close. Dragon. That's closer of the three. But when you say or don't say whale, that's where they get the trouble with Jesus and Jonah. When Jesus said that as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, and then you say, well, you know, Jonah doesn't know what he was talking about. And when you say Jonah doesn't know what he's talking about, then Jesus doesn't know what he's talking about. And when we look at whale here, The modern Bibles don't know what they're talking about. Why would you change that? You, fig you figured the creator of all the creations would know the difference between a whale and a crocodile. But many don't believe he's the creator. Thou camest forth with thy rivers. Bab uh, uh, Nile. Thou troublest the waters with thy feet. I mean, he, he stepping through the water and making money. And he follows their rivers. Now take a look at Revelation chapter 13. We're going to look at the Antichrist. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea. Beast having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon the heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast was like a leopard, his feet were the feet of a bear, and his mouth was the mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him power, his seat and his great authority. And I saw one of his heads as wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered at the beast. Then you go into the image, mark of the beast. This beast in 
Ezekiel's coming out of the rivers, the beast in Revelation 13 is coming out of the Mediterranean Sea. The Nile feeds into the Mediterranean Sea. Thus saith the Lord God, I will therefore spread out my net. You spread your net out upon animal fish. When Jesus called John and, and James, they were fixing their nets. When Jesus appeared before they were fishing, they had the nets on the wrong side of the boat. So we're looking at an aquatic, reptile, amphibian kind of creature that's missing from the eagle, from the man, from the cow, and the cherub. I will spread my net over thee to company many people, and they shall bring thee up in my net. So Pharaoh's going to be captured. The Antichrist is going to be captured. Then will I leave thee upon the land? I, okay, so this aquatic fish animal don't stay on land. They die. I will cast thee forth upon the open field. I will cause all the fowls of the heaven to remain upon thee to eat. I will fill the beasts of the whole earth with thee. So animal and beast are going to feed. I will lay thee. I will lay thy flesh upon the mountains. And fill the valleys with thy height. You mean like Goliath? He was killed in the valley. And David brought his head to Saul, which was in the mountain. You did get that, right? You do read and study your Bible, don't you? I will also water with thy blood in the land where thou swimmest. Nile. For Pharaoh. But doesn't the tribulation period, isn't there a period where the water turns to blood? You did get that cross-reference. You do remember in Exodus the water turning to blood. You do remember that. Even to the mountains. And the river shall be full of thee. When I shall put thee out, I will cover the heavens and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with the cloud, and the moon shall not give it. Do you recognize that reference? That's the second advent at the end of the tribulation, where the sun goes dark, the moon goes dark, and the, turn, light, the stars are turned out, and you are in a period of darkness, and then here comes Jesus. That's prophecy. I don't think when this Pharaoh king died. I don't think the, the sun went out. I don't think the moon stopped. I don't think the star. Maybe for him when he died. But verse 7 is at the end of the seventh year. Just before Jesus Christ comes. You can't move. The, you can't lose that cross reference unless you mess with it. All the bright lights in heaven will, will make dark over thee. So you will have no use for Hubble. And Hubble brings us very great images of God's creation. I'll set darkness upon the land, saith the Lord God. So there's coming a time at the end of the tribulation that heavens will grow dark. There goes your sunrise service. There goes your sun Baal worship. There goes laying half naked or fully naked in, in front of Baal to get your skin brown. You can't go out at night because you can't see. And there's coming a time that all artificial light will be turned out. Set darkness upon the land. All right, I'll turn out the lights in heaven. All right, that's the sun... That's sun, moon, everything in the heaven. Then darkness upon the land. That's all artificial light. That's what happened in Egypt. And, and the land of Israel, uh, the, where the children of Israel were, they had light. But Egypt didn't. That's coming again. I will also vex the hearts of many people. 
You, you imagine that moment when all goes dark. I'm told on the way from here to, to California, I think I think Arizona or Nevada. I, 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 I'd like to go, but I don't want to go. There's a place where you go into this cave and you go deep into the earth. And they sit you down and then they turn off the light for a period of time. And I have talked to people who've been there in other places in, in the planet Earth. And they said, it is, you're sitting there, but he says, you, you're eerie, you're afraid, you don't even want to get up. And they said, it's weird because it's a darkness that can be felt. That's what the earth is coming to. And just think what it's going to do to the people and their, and their fears and their anxieties. Well, the sun will come up tomorrow. No, it's not. But the sun will be coming on horse. And for many people, they will be the goat nations that will be judged by the Son of God coming. And the sheep nations that do, they don't even know what they've done. And set darkness upon thy land like Exodus, save the Lord God. I also vex the hearts of many people when I shall bring thy destruction upon uh, among the nations. Didn't we read earlier, a few chapters ago, didn't we read about Babylon falling? Everybody's, oh, Babylon's falling, Babylon's falling, Tyre's falling, oh, gee. Where's the toilet paper? Where's the sanitizer? It, it, it's going to get worse, my friends. It's going to get worse. You better put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. And to countries which thou hast not known. Yea, I will make many people amaze at thee. And their king shall be horribly afraid of thee. I will brandish my sword before them. That's the sword of the Lord. That's the word of God. That's what's coming out of the mouth of Jesus Christ when he comes. Read Revelation 19. Out of his mouth comes the sword, which is the word. And they shall tremble at every moment. Every man for his life in the day of thy fall. When Tyre fell, it destructed all the economy. When Babylon fell, it is going to destruct all the economy. When the Antichrist falls, oh boy. Jesus Christ is now in charge, and you're one of three groups of people on earth. You're either the Jews, you've been now protected, you are a Jew cursor, you will be condemned to hell, and you help the Jews, you'll be allowed in the millennium. Where's the purgatory? There is no purgatory. What about, oh, everybody gets a trophy for, for partition? No, you ain't going to get that. For thus saith the Lord God, the sword of the king of Babylon shall come upon thee. Now we've already been told of Jeremiah, we've been told of Ezekiel. I believe this is the time that Jeremiah has been kidnapped, taken into Egypt, and God says, put, you know, at the brick kiln, put these stones, because Babylon's going to come, and he's going to set his throne here. Ezekiel and Jeremiah run parallel and touch him. By swords, plural, of the mighty, will I cause thy multitude to fall. The terrible, the nations, all of them, they shall spoil the pomp. That's, you know, the great, you know, the doodad, the great, you know, who I am of Egypt. And all the multitude thereof shall be destroyed. Boy, Egypt keeps getting it. I will destroy also all the beasts thereof. From beside the great waters. There's a beast that comes out of the great waters. We read. Neither shall the foot of man trouble them any more, nor the hoofs of beasts trouble them. Then will I make their waters deep, and cause the rivers to run like oil. 
saith the Lord God. When I shall make the land of Egypt desolate, and the country shall be destitute of that whereof it was full. It was full, now it's done. And I shall smite all them that dwell therein. Then shall they know that I am the Lord. You shall know the Lord. There it is. When your land is nothing no more. This is a lamentation. Wherewith they shall lament her. The daughters of the nation shall lament her. They shall lament her. Even for Egypt. And for all the multitude. Saith the Lord God. 